My name is Dr. Adam Farber and I would like to talk to you today about the use of ultrasound performing guided aspirations or injections. As an orthopedic surgeon, injections are a common procedure performed in my office and used to treat a variety of conditions including arthritis and bursitis of the knee, shoulder, and elbow. In addition, I frequently drain fluid collections in the knee and elbow. Finally, tendon disorders including rotator cuff tendonitis of the shoulder and tennis and golfer's elbow may also benefit from the use of a therapeutic injection. Here is a picture of a hyaluronic acid injection being performed for a patient with arthritis of the knee. This is a photograph of a steroid injection being performed for a patient with bursitis of the shoulder. Here is an example of an aspiration of a fluid collection in a patient with bursitis of the elbow. Finally, this image shows a steroid injection being performed for a patient with tennis elbow. The optimal benefits of these injections occur with accurate placement of the appropriate medication. If the injections are not accurately performed, then patients are unlikely to get the maximum benefit of the medication. Recently, several studies have been performed to assess the accuracy of injections performed in a blind fashion, that is, without the use of image guidance such as ultrasound or CAT scan. Unfortunately, these studies show that even in the hands of skilled physicians, the accuracy of these injections performed without image guidance is usually between 60 and 80 percent. That means 20 to 40 percent of all injections are not performed in the appropriate location. Over the past several years, the use of ultrasound technology has been employed by physicians like myself to improve the accuracy of these injections. Ultrasound is a fast, non-invasive method to aid in the accuracy of injections performed in the office setting. There is no radiation, and studies have shown that the accuracy of injections in the shoulder, knee, and elbow exceeds 90% and approaches 100% with the use of ultrasound guidance. In addition, by being able to see precisely where the injection is going, the injection can be performed more safely by being able to avoid inadvertently injecting into structures which may be damaged by medications such as a steroid. In my practice, I find the ultrasound useful when performing injections in the knee of either steroid, hyaluronic acid such as orthovisc, or PRP. Furthermore, when aspirating swelling inside the knee joint or cysts around the knee joint, the ultrasound is also very helpful. For the shoulder, I like to use ultrasound when performing injections into the glenohumeral joint space, the collarbone joint space, the subacromial bursal space, and the biceps tendon sheath. In my practice, the ultrasound machine is also helpful for performing steroid or PRP injections for either tennis or golfer's elbow directly into the area of tendon degeneration and for performing aspirations and injections of swollen olecranon bursa on the back of the elbow. Finally, ultrasound is useful performing injections into the hip joint. Without the ultrasound, this must be done in a radiology facility with a CAT scan or at a surgery center using a fluoroscopy machine. The ultrasound allows this hip injection to be performed in the office setting without making an additional appointment or requiring radiation exposure. Knee injections and shoulder bursal injections are two of the most common ultrasound guided injections that I perform in the office on a regular basis. To understand the use of ultrasound in performing a knee injection, let me first explain some basic knee anatomy. The knee joint is composed of three bones, the thigh bone known as the femur, the kneecap called the patella, and the large shin bone known as the tibia. The space between the patella and femur, shown in the red circle in these images, is the most accessible way to inject the knee joint. When performing the injection, the needle follows the trajectory as demonstrated by the green arrow in these diagrams. The image on the right shows the ultrasound view of the knee that is depicted in the diagram on the left. The green arrow represents the trajectory of the needle, and the red circle represents the joint space. The yellow line in each of these images represents the contour of the femur or thigh bone. The purple outlined area in each image represents the joint space where the medication should be injected. Here is an ultrasound image of one of my patients with a significant amount of swelling in the knee joint. The fluid is the dark area enclosed within the purple outline in the ultrasound image. For this patient, I first drained the fluid and then injected medication into the joint space. The bright white linear structure seen entering the joint space on the left of this video is the needle. As the fluid is drained, you can see the joint space will get smaller. After the drainage is complete, you can see how much smaller the dark joint space is. The joint space is enclosed by the red boxes again with the dark area representing joint fluid. In the image on the right, you can see how much smaller the joint space is after the fluid has been removed, and you can also see the needle within the yellow oval 
that was used to drain the joint fluid. With the needle still in position, medication is then injected into the joint space as is shown in this short video clip. Injections for shoulder bursitis are also commonly performed in my practice. To understand the use of ultrasound in performing the shoulder bursal injection, let me first explain some basic shoulder anatomy. The supraspinatus tendon of the rotator cuff attaches onto the ball of the ball and socket joint. Between this tendon and the overlying shoulder blade, also known as the acromion, lies a bursa in the subacromial space. Bursitis occurs when this bursa gets irritated, inflamed, and thickened. This is a common cause of shoulder pain. Injections intended to treat shoulder bursitis are aimed into the bursa in the subacromial space as is shown in the image on the right. When performing the injection, the needle follows the trajectory as demonstrated by the green arrow. The image on the right shows the ultrasound view of the shoulder that is depicted in the diagram on the left. The yellow line in each of these images represents the contour of the humeral head or the ball of the ball and socket joint. The purple outlined area in each image represents the supraspinatus rotator cuff tendon. The red outlined area in each image represents the inflamed, thickened subacromial bursa. The green area represents the path of the needle entering the bursa to perform the subacromial bursal steroid injection. In this video, you can see the needle as the bright white line entering the subacromial bursa on the left-hand portion of the monitor. Once the needle enters the bursa, the medication is injected. Care is taken to avoid injecting into the supraspinatus rotator cuff tendon itself to avoid injuring or weakening the tendon. Thank you for your attention. For further information about the use of ultrasound for performing guided aspirations or injections, please feel free to contact my office at 480-219-3342 or visit my website at phoenixshoulderandknee.com.